100% agree with you on that. Good job on that. Okay, awesome. Let's move on. Next question. A lot of people think live good is too good to be true. What part of live good would you consider to be most misunderstood? Or in other words, why do people feel that way? That's an interesting question. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, um, I mean, I think probably because it's it's different. It's unique. It's something that's never been done before. Um, you know, a lot of companies have great products, but they're selling them for 50, 60, 80 bucks. And we're selling them for 18, 20, 24. Uh, and it's, it's, it's hard for people to, I guess, grasp how we're doing that. Um, and when we, yeah, so I mean, those companies, especially the network marketing companies, because there's some other companies like Organifi, who create some great products and why they sell them for 60, 70 bucks probably because they can get it because there's, you know, there's not really competition for them until now. And I think that we're going to um, change a lot of things and kind of require a lot of, of companies to do things a little bit differently. And I think competition is good. I think, and I welcome competition. I think anything that helps the end consumer, the buyer, the little guy, the person who's making the purchase, consuming the products to help them be able to save money and get a high quality product, get value. Value is really the key word right now um, is important. So uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is, it's, it's new, it's different, it's unique. And, and um, that's probably why it's misunderstood, but it's definitely real. We have the most amazing high quality products um, and we make them available for a few dollars above cost. So you guys can actually get them, get benefit from them and have success, uh, you know, both physically and financially with it. Yeah. And, and you're right. There's probably a lot of examples in the marketplace where companies are first to the mainstream market. You know, Yeti Coors comes to mind, right? Now there's a lot of Yeti-like Coors out there for much lower price points. And uh, Organifi might be one of those, those type of companies. So, but you did mention something. You mentioned something about price points. So how, how is it possible that we can have such high quality products at such affordable prices from a business yeah, perspective? I mean, Right. So again, you look at network marketing companies and in order to have a compensation plan that pays out what these companies are paying out 50, 60 percent in a lot of companies, you know, you make a product for 10 bucks and you're selling it for 60. You pay out half of that. You're at, you know, 30 bucks minus 10. You got to have the company's got to have a little bit of profit in there. And a lot of these companies have a lot of overhead. They've got a lot of corporate employees. They have a big corporate office. Um, and the company needs to make money. And so that's, uh, yeah. So the way we do it, again, is a little bit different. Instead, we kind of, it's almost like we're pooling our money together to buy these products in bulk, the highest quality. I mean, Ryan formulates them. He does not skimp on ingredients, on quality, on manufacturing, really on anything, um, so that we can create these amazing products and sell them for, you know, for lower prices than everyone else. And still, we have enough of a profit margin in there to keep the company healthy um, and to, to allow you guys to get the products that you need and to save people money. And then on the membership side, you know, there's a little bit of profit in there as well to run the company. And so, again, we run on very thin margins. I mean, right now, we've got about 600,000 users as of, you know, about eight months in since we've launched this power line and, and compensation plan. Um, and that's not, you know, and we're ordering a ton of inventory. So the company, you know, from a, a profit loss perspective on selling the product, you know, depending on your accounting practices, and this is all numbers stuff, um, you know, it, it, some accounting practices, it looks like we're making a little bit of money. Some it looks like we're losing because we're, we're spending more on inventory, but it's really not going to be until we get to a million, two million members that the company is, is, um, you know, the Ryan and I and, and Otter at least to get to really take out some, some good profits. Um, and that's not to say, you know, the, the company isn't healthy now. It absolutely is. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're geared, we're ready to scale for the long term. And the inventory we have, I mean, you guys look at our, we got two warehouses packed with inventory and more on the way. So we're ready to, to grow, we're ready to scale. And um, yeah, that's, that's how we roll. We just, we work on low profit margins. I mean, look, so a lot of companies, I mean, they brag about having 100 corporate employees. We have, what, like six customer service people and like eight warehouse packers. I mean, that's our staff. Our entire 
operating cost is under a hundred thousand dollars a month which is very low compared to most companies out there and so you know the scalability and just the, the way that we run that on, on thin margins but still profitably um i think is something that most companies don't do and i think something that a lot of companies should try to focus on more and a lot of that is is also because us as a corporate staff we take on a lot of responsibility ourselves we do a lot of stuff um, instead of paying other people to do it, but that's just how we roll. Good, man. All right, great. Good answer. So a, a few months ago, Ben, you posted a video about the compensation plan. I think it has thousands and thousands of views. There's a question here that says, is there any possibility of the compensation plan uh, being changed? That's a good question. So anytime you change a compensation plan, unless you're just straight adding to it, you're always if you change something you're going to help some people and you're going to hurt some people and we don't like to do that we don't like to the, the second part of that um you know you don't want to take money out of people's pockets so it's very unlike i mean nothing is ever for sure there's a chance you know as the company becomes more and more profitable as we continue to grow um that maybe we can add another rank or put a little bit more money in the comp plan or maybe you know, keep the product prices the same if the costs come down and be able to pay out a little. I don't know. I'm not telling you we're doing any of that stuff. Um, it's also possible, but very unlikely that we change some things in the long term. So I would say most likely, no, there won't be any changes. But, um, you know, five years down the road, um, you never know what, what could happen. Regulations, changes, requirements. Um, it's just time. You know, you got to keep up with trends, timing. Everything that's happening in the, in the economy, we don't know where we're going to be as a world in five years. So, um, you know, anything is possible, but in the short term, no. Okay, thank you. A great question, poignant question. It's awfully broad, so you can go wherever you want with this one. But guys, get your notebooks out, take notes. Ben, what is the secret to success? Ooh, good one. <laughs> okay, so this is probably not what anyone is thinking you know that i'm going to say hard work perseverance focus dedication don't procrastinate get stuff done go to work um because all those things are important but it, it, this is totally weird for most people I, I think there's two two things number one i think a lot of it is is god given you know universe given just it's in my dna and i think some people are blessed with that um, and just have it. And I, you know, I've been kind of entrepreneurial since I was like eight years old. I would, <laughs> I remember I used to buy these little horse stickers for five cents. I'd sell them at school for 25 cents. Then I started mowing lawns. I was doing baseball card shows when I was 12 years old, buying a table for 50 bucks. I'd sell it, you know, a thousand bucks worth of baseball cards in a weekend. Um, and you know, had a stash of cash in my, my underwear drawer when I was 12 years old. So I've just always kind of been entrepreneurial. I don't know where it came from, why, what drives it, where the focus is. You know, I had this conversation with my wife because I, I, I do, I think about these things and I got so many, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time because all these ideas pop into my head all the time. Like, I mean, if, if Live Good wasn't here or something else wasn't here, I wanted to, like, I mean, I could launch like a hundred different companies just from all the ideas that are in my head. And I have, I, I don't like saying no, to great ideas um, because I do, I don't know. I just believe there's some weird stuff I believe. I believe the universe gives you ideas and if you act on them, you get more. And just like being grateful and thankful for what you are, where you are, what you have, even if it's very little to nothing. Um, I mean, when I was 20 years, 22 years old, I filed bankruptcy. I was getting into network marketing. I thought I was going to be a millionaire in six months. Like everyone didn't happen like that. Racked up forty thousand dollars in credit card debt which you know at that time was a lot of money especially when you have like a hundred dollars a month worth of income coming in um but it was a great lesson and i was very thankful for where i was at the time i was always learning always uh trying to improve myself and so yeah that's a long answer that didn't really say anything but i think so part of it is is just dna i believe i i truly believe that for people who don't have it that doesn't mean you can't have success. Um, I absolutely think you you can. You just have to learn. You have to focus. You have to um, educate yourself a lot more, and you have to be diligent. And you have to, you know, a lot of people 
have different levels of risk tolerance and and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Get comfort zones, and you've got to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to be get comfortable being uncomfortable. In mm -hmm. fact, my jujitsu instructor says that you got to get comfortable being in uncomfortable situations. I mean, if someone's laying on your face, and <laughs> you just gotta for five minutes, you gotta just wait until the right opportunity is there. And uh, I think that that's true with business as well. So secret to success, um, you know, if it's not God given, you got to focus, you got to be get out of your comfort zone, do things that are hard, do things that are scary. And I try to teach my kids this as well. And my daughter is really, I mean, she has done a lot of stuff. My son is, is slowly getting there, which really makes me proud and, and happy and excited. But, you know, we, we push it on them a lot, you know, nothing worth having or doing or being happens easy. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to make it happen. You got to do things that are scary. And that's, uh, yeah, I don't think it's a secret, but that's, that's how you get there. Okay, buddy. Amen to that. I think uh, people can relate. They can understand that getting out of your comfort zone, just going and getting those first two people to, to be a bronze. I mean, I probably, that's a, like we say, that's a huge sense of accomplishment. And that's probably the most important rank in the company. It's the foundation. So thank you for that, Ben. All right. So next up, this one I hear too. And I think all of us have people on the fringe that are saying these types of things. And I'm very curious to see and hear how you go, how you answer this question. So people are saying live good will not last. How can we be sure live good will be here long term? And that, that's an interesting question. I don't know where the concern might come from there because we, first of all, we do everything right, everything clean, 100% um, legal, 100% fair. So, uh, and our products are absolutely amazing. I, I, and I do, I guess maybe the question comes from seeing a lot of other companies, you know, go from nothing to really big to gone in a few years. I mean, I can name probably five of them. I mean, you look at, you know, where did um, Mona V go? Where did Zango go? Where did Vysalis go? These are some of the biggest companies over the last 10 years. And now they're gone. Jeunesse is now just sold to another company. They were huge, especially in Europe. Um, I mean, there are a lot of companies that come, they grow, and they go out of business. And I think part of the reason for that is they're all led by the opportunity, by the money. And that's not to say that live good isn't, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But once everyone has in, in the industry, because people, okay, especially nowadays, and actually not just now, because we talk about the average person in the network marketing industry buys a product for 2.8 months until they're either not making money or they, they just, they can't afford it anymore, or they don't believe that it's going to help them make money. 2.8 months, under three months is the average lifespan of someone in a network marketing company. So once you've kind of exhausted all those people who come in to make money and, and you might have a huge explosion of growth and then it, it drops off and everyone goes to the next deal. And that's why, you know, it's interesting because all these companies, again, they lead with the compensation plan. This is the best compensation plan out there. This is the best company that's ever been in the network marketing industry. They have a good five, six, seven year run. And then they fall off, they milk it for all they can, and, and everyone goes to another company when the, the checks start going down. Um, and again, I think live good is driven a lot by the opportunity, by the opportunity to earn income on that spillover in the matrix uh, and just from the compensation plan. But I think the thing that's going to make live good long term compared to all these other companies is the products. That's what is big. Look. We're probably selling more, we are selling more products than most companies in the network marketing industry who, where you have to buy a product to get paid in that company. We're selling more product than almost all of those companies. And there are no requirements to buy product. No one has to purchase products in LiveGood. That's what's going to make this a long-term opportunity because people need supplements. I mean, Ryan and Lisa talk about it on every opportunity call, every Friday call, every Monday product call. People need supplements. You're not getting enough from your food. Everyone needs something. And a lot of people need a lot. I mean, I take almost every one of our products and I'm a healthy guy. Uh, I'm actually drinking my mix of greens and collagen right here. That's what's going to keep this thing long-term because 
the sub, the nutritional supplement industry, I don't know the exact number, but it's a multi, multi-billion dollar industry. We have the highest quality products on the planet at the lowest prices anywhere. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense. People are want products. They want value. And again, that word, I'm sure it's going to come up a few more times in this call. They want value. And that's exactly what we're offering. So that's what's going to continue driving this company long term. Yes, I think a lot of people who maybe don't get enough spillover aren't seeing you know hundreds of dollars a month. I think we're going to get people dropping out if they're making 12 bucks a month, even though it's covering their membership, if they're not buying the product. But the people who are buying the product, guys, they're going to stay on this company for years and years and years. Even if they go to another opportunity, another company where they're making money, there's not going to be a better place to get higher quality products at a better price than LiveGood. So I see a lot of people might leave the opportunity side, but continue to be a customer of LiveGood for years and years to come. And I think that's really the, the backbone. And again, every product that we continue to add just creates more value for that $9.95 a month membership that people aren't going to stop paying. Okay, got it. Speaking of other companies, Ben, now besides LiveGood, who is the best network marketing company out there? <laughs> That's a funny question. Um, yeah, interesting. I don't know how. To, so, what was the question? What's the I, best? Yeah, so it's what, what's the best network marketing company besides what's the good? I thought it was the best a funny question network marketing. Too. Okay, it was funny. I was actually looking at Amway, at, at their website the other day. I was just curious because they're still doing over $2 billion a year in sales. It's crazy. Okay. They wow. had, they had like, um, I was just looking at some of the, pro- I mean, their protein shakes like 50 bucks. So they have, they had a, a turmeric product that's in our factor four. That was like 30 bucks. They had a CoQ10 product. that was like 20 bucks. That's also in our factor four. They had a garlic product that was like 28 bucks. That's also in our factor four. They didn't have an omega-3 or a fish oil product. So you add those three products together, turmeric, CoQ10, and garlic, you're paying $80 over there. Is that right? Yeah, that 80 80. bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, compared to our $18.50, and you're not even getting the fish oil in their product. It, it's So it, you know, to say, is Amway the best company? I don't know, they're, they're still the biggest. Um, you know, I think prepaid legal is a great company. I've actually had a prepaid legal membership for like 20 years, but do I, and so from a, a, is it a great company? Yes, it's a great company. They provide a great service at a great value, but is it a great opportunity? No, everybody's already in prepaid legal. They've got 3 million members. That's another reason I think it's a great company. Um, And I think that was a question, the best company but from an opportunity perspective, to go to prepaid legal now and try to join and make money would be very difficult because everybody's already been in it, has a membership, or has been pitched on it. So it's very challenging. Um, you know, other companies, I mean, we buy a lot of products. My wife buys uh, an Arbon. She's got a friend in Arbon. They have these like hydration sticks, which Ryan is actually working on, a product that we're going to have. So she won't be buying from them anymore. You know, she used to buy this, the deep blue from doTERRA. Now we use our, our CBD pain cream. Um, she buys essential oils from Young Living, I think. Uh, you know, we're working on some essential oils. So there's a lot of great companies out there. I think, uh, you know, if you're talking about building a company, um, in full disclosure, we I do the software for this company I'm about to talk about. So I actually earn money. I'm not pitching it, just answering the question. Um, my friend Justin Clark owns a company called iCoin Pro. It teaches you how to trade cryptocurrency. Um, and so you can actually, it teaches you how to, my, we've had a membership there. My, my son, when he was nine, he's 15 years old. Uh, when he was nine, he started following Justin's system, trading crypto. And now he's like my, my um, what do you call it, advisor. I'm like, hey, it's funny. Yesterday, because I, I, I trade stocks sometimes, I'm like, hey, I just bought some Neo today it's down. It was like 15 bucks last week. It's in the 11s. Now I'm like, I bought some Neo. And then later last night, he's like, dude, Neo's going to go down. <laughs> and now today it's down two and a half percent. He's like, it might go up, but it's going to go down before it goes up. And it's crazy. He just learned that from uh, Justin's system. So I think from a value perspective, again, I, I think everyone should have a way to make money to, outside of network marketing. And I think that's a, a cool one because again, value. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, any company that's selling 
even Amway, you know, even Herbalife, who are selling overpriced products, products that they have to mark up six, eight, 10, 12 times to be able to pay out big commissions in a compensation plan, I don't believe are going to be here. Really, I mean, I think the next six months is going to be really eye-opening for a lot of these companies who who think that even if that, it's funny, I, like I see a company launching right now. One of my friends went over there because he got a, a deal. Um, we don't do deals, but he got a deal and he's pitching this company selling a $57 multivitamin. And he's getting people in it for the opportunity side. It's just the next six to 12 months, I, I think it's going to be a very, an awakening for the industry and value is going to come into play. Every, everything is shifting towards value. And if you're trying to sell overpriced stuff, it's not going to work anymore. And just another reason that I think live good. Um, so to answer your question, yeah, live good, I think is definitely the best opportunity. Uh, I think if, if there was a second iCoin pro is a good, uh, good choice. Um, other than that, uh, actually my friend, Dave, Jordan, I have nothing to do with this company. He's just a good friend. Uh, he launched a, a, he has a collection of sports memorabilia, probably the biggest sports memorabilia collector in the world, but he's selling value. Like he's selling $65 worth of baseball cards or whatever for like 50 bucks. So you kind of get a little bit more for your money than you're, you're spending. So I think value is good. I think it's a hard opportunity to build um, because it's, it's just, that I don't think the interest is there, but uh you know, value is, is important. So I don't know if that answered it, but no, you did. Go. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So next up is a question from internet for international pack. So when is the international pack going to be available? Okay. That's, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, it's close. We're, we're just waiting on factor four to come back in stock. As soon as it hits the warehouse, we're packing those boxes, shipping them to Germany and, and probably a week or two later, they'll be up on the website. So, uh, I'd say three weeks. Okay. Assuming factor four comes in in the next few days. Yep. Okay. Good answer. Thank you. Okay. This question, Ben, I want to know this answer too. Are we going to have a convention? Okay. Uh, conventions are normally for training uh, and for like product launches, for recognition. And those things are all good. And this is just a little network marketing education, I guess. So, a lot of people in network marketing, it's very interesting. And Ryan, we talk about this and you guys got to do the social um, interaction, social, what did we talk about? Uh, just purely socialization, right? Yeah, just having stuff going on in your life. For a lot of people, and, and I, I don't want to say it, it's sad, it's great. It's great that network marketing offers this to people, offers, you know, kind of a, a way to connect with a lot of other like-minded people. And so that's why people kind of crave conventions because they want to get together with like-minded people. And, and that's great. And a lot of times, you know, they look fo so forward to that. And I think it's, again, totally a positive thing, but it just shows how much people need that social interaction and that just part of their life where they connect and do things with like-minded people. And that's why this is kind of a training. But again, I think, you know, Ryan and Lisa, I know are, are going to, do a call specifically on this topic here soon. I think everyone needs to, and I, I see it so much in, in network marketing and really everywhere. People just, they don't have hobbies. They don't have things going on in their life outside of their network marketing business or outside of their family that they, they don't have any social outlet and they don't have any social interaction. They don't have anything to look forward to um, or challenges or competition. Like I love, I have a little mountain bike group you know, Ryan's kind of part of it when he rides rarely, but, um, you know, we, we compete with each other in a super friendly way. We're cheering for each other, but still want to crush each other out there as far as, you know, who's the fastest. Um, you know, I, I have great friends that I surf with. Ryan's one of them. You know, I love snowboarding. We, I lo even, so I, I think you guys, and this is just kind of a little training. You guys need to find something that you enjoy, that you can do with other people who also enjoy the same thing. And it could be something simple like, you know, go play cards, join. And I'm not talking about poker. I'm talking about like hearts or spades or something like that. You know, find a, a local card group or start a local card group or something. Find a walking club or a hiking club or um, a knitting club. I mean, for real, there are a lot of activities and opportunities out there. You know, get into golf. 
or take some lessons and then you could join the, the Tuesday game, the men's game, the women's game, the women's clinics, whatever. You know, there's so many opportunities out there to go socialize with people. And it's such an important and impactful part of your life that really keeps you going and keeps you driven. And um, that, you know, the, the conventions are great and they're a great way to do that. But I, I, I don't, and I'm, to the answer, I'm not trying to avoid answering the question. I, I, we don't have one in the short term plans, mainly because we don't need to do any training. I think all the training, we, we've got the best training on our Friday calls. You've also got YouTube. You've got, I mean, there are just unlimited resources to teach you how to build a company, how to recruit people. And here, all you have to do is tell people about the products and they're going to want to buy them. Um, recognition, you know, we kind of do that on call. That's cool to have and, and to see people having success. Uh, and then product launches, you know, I mean, we're launching a new product every, every other week, it seems like now as we continue to grow. But uh, so no, there's not one in the, in the plans. I think we'll probably, we're more likely to do. And I know Trisha Costa, one of our platinum leaders is, is preparing a cruise that everyone's invited to. So maybe some activities and events, not necessarily conventions, but at the same time, you got fine stuff to do outside of network marketing, outside of, you know, the group that you're in. And, and um, it's, it, it will really make your life a lot more enjoyable, have more to live for, have more just happiness. Um, because I, I also think, you know, you can't help others until you help yourself. You can't be happy, you know, help other people get happy if you're not truly happy inside yourself. Um, and so that's just a little advice from me. But uh, to answer your question, no, no, no conventions in the short term plans, possibly down the road. But um, more likely, we, we will have some events going on. Oh, yes, buddy. That context in that answer was beautiful. Thank you for that. The socialization. We are social creatures. One of Lisa's mentors is actually one of her clients uh, in health coaching. This is a, he's a great human. And his thing was skiing, which, you know, skiing, tennis, and golf are like kind of the three sports that as you age, you can gracefully continue to participate in with others. Ben, as a matter of fact, tonight I have my first pickleball lesson with a group from the neighborhood. Um, man, that's so important. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. And, uh, and as a reminder, just kind of following up on the training, it's like, you know, if you have people in your life, they're just like constantly negative, you know, look, you know, saying no also can be a powerful tool and, and finding other social circles to, to kind of work into, um, I, I believe in that also. So, Ben, we're going to go into a question on the tech side now. This question is, can we have a two-factor authentication on the accounts to avoid hackers from stealing money from us? Okay. So I've seen that question a few times. I've had it emailed to me and asked to me. Um, short answer is yes. My concern is this. You know, anytime we add something, change something, it, you know, instead of it creating making things easier a lot of times it actually makes things way more confusing and creates way more support issues than the alternative mm -hmm. so that's kind of my concern right now i know if we turn on a, a, a two-factor authentication thing and require it that um we're just going to get a ton of support issues and people trying to figure out how to use it locking themselves out of their own systems and then we have to figure out how to let them in if they're really the same person that lock themselves out, or if it's just a hacker trying to pretend that they are. So it's it's interesting. Um, my advice is, look, we're not going to send you emails asking you to log in and, and do anything other than buy your product. Just go to, don't click on any links. Go to livegood.com and log in there. That and and you won't have any issues. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we are looking into it. We're looking into an easy solution that's optional. So you can add it if you want, but, um, I, and we don't have, you know, it's funny. So I see this a lot. I, I see, you know, you get two complaints that are the same and then all of a sudden people think everyone's getting hacked and losing money or, you know, someone um, gets a wrong product and now all of a sudden they think everyone's getting wrong products in their order. So just because, you know, a couple people, yes, have gotten their, their accounts hacked because they weren't safe with their password and they, and someone got it. Um, doesn't mean our system isn't secure. It just means you are kind of not real careful with your personal information. Um, so it, it's not a common thing. It is not happening often at all in this company. 
But again, to answer your question, uh, yes, we're looking into a, a, an easy, um, <laughs> as questionless, supportless uh, way to do it. Yeah, and a reminder to those out there, do not share your password with others. That's a bad idea. All right, next question. Can we have a designated customer service agent responsible for helping Platinums and above? No, for two reasons. One, Platinums aren't any more important than someone who just signed up this morning. Um, and I, I don't like that they may think they are. <laughs> you guys aren't. Uh, so no for that reason. And also no, literally our support, you guys are getting responses the same day, usually within a few hours. There's no reason to have an, an another level of support that maybe is going to save you five minutes on getting an answer. So, no. All right, follow up to that then. So, what about adding a customer service escalation department for situations that they cannot solve? Um, I don't know what situation support wouldn't be able to solve, or how a, another level of support would be able to solve one that are already highly trained people and customer service manager can't solve. So, I mean, occasionally, you know, questions are forwarded to me in certain situations. They say, what should we do here? And I'll tell them. So there's kind of an escalation level there already. But um, I just don't see, again, I, I, don't, I don't see an issue where that's needed. And I don't see that... Um, yeah, I, I mean, maybe, you know, one question a week isn't worth hiring a whole new person or department to do that. So, no, again. All right, we appreciate that, Ben. Thank you. So now how about, um, are we going to add another rank? And I had referenced earlier about adding Crown Diamond. So are we adding another rank? It's, again, it's possible. As I talked about earlier, our, our, okay, our compensation plan, guys, I, I want you, for those of you who know how to do math, if you add up all the percentages that we pay out in the compensation plan, we pay out 80% on the front end, 80% of the initial $10 and the $40 affiliate fee, 80% get paid out to you guys in commissions. On the back end, it's up to 85%. If you add all those, it's 37.5% in the matrix, it's 45% in matching bonuses, because we pay out all of those matching bonuses. It's not like that 5% or that 5%. It's that 5%, that 5%, that 5%, that 5%, I think seven times or something, plus the 50, plus the 10, plus the other 10, plus the fives, I mean, the threes. Um, and then the two and a half percent in the bonus pool. So it's up to, and obviously different legs, some legs were maxed out. Some actually no legs were maxed out because we don't have five crown diamonds stacked in any individual legs. We're probably still under 80% total payout there, but that's on the monthly membership. So, and keep in mind on the yearly membership, we're actually paying out 12 months on only taking in 10 months. So we're paying out eight out of the $10 or eight out of the almost $8 for the yearlies. Um, so the margins again are, are really tight. So to add anything to this compensation plan, um, we'd have to be, you know, we'd have to easily be in the millions of, of members at that point. But at the same time, we'd have to have, you know, when we first launched our crown diamond rank, it was because when our first diamond asked me, you know, what do we need to do to get another rank? He wanted something else to, uh, to strive for. I'm like, as soon as we hit 10 diamonds, I'll add another rank. We hit 10 diamonds. He called me out I'm like, all right, crown diamonds here. Uh, so I'll, you know, I'll, I'll throw the same carrot out there. You know, we have 10 crown diamonds. We'll add another rank. Um, yeah, we'll put it at that. So there you go. Ben, I think I might replay that, that answer a couple of times, because that's really important. I, I like that answer. Thank you. Uh, Ben, that concludes it, man. That is everything. We've spent now about 45 minutes together. I think it was extremely valuable. I'm hoping this will be the first of a few, like you said, maybe the others can, uh, we can do this with, uh, each department, but Ben, is there anything, uh, closing words that you have for us? Yeah. Let me see if anyone else asked me, I, I've, I've been getting the emails and Facebook message. Oh, here's a good one. I want to answer this one just because it's a, a little controversial. Um, <laughs> so here's a question uh, forwarded to me by someone. It says, are we approved with the BBB? Now, I just want to 
say this because I I'm a, a, a the total opposite of a fan of the BBB. In fact, anyone that advertises they're they're accredited with the Better Business Bureau. I don't do business with them, and the reason is because the Better Business Bureau is one of the biggest scams out there. If you YouTube, I want everyone to do this just because I, I freaking hate the BBB because uh, they send us stuff and they're like, if you don't respond to this, we're going to have to report you to the authorities. It's like, dude, who, who are you? You're some independent organization trying to pretend to police the world. And then you're scamming everyone into paying you to get an A plus rating. And if you YouTube just YouTube BBB scam or BBB on 2020, 2020 did a report, the news thing, 2020, that, I mean, they had some like terrorist organizations with A plus business ratings because they paid for their accreditation. And then they've got some like, like the Hilton hotel had an F because they wouldn't respond and play their, their game. So um, no, we're definitely not playing the BBBs um, playing into their scam. I, I do not, do business with companies that that do that. Again, we do things right. We always will. Um, but to, to to have some organization that that I believe is a scam, say that we're good. What does that even mean? So, um, all right. So that answers that one. Let me see if we got any more. Let's check my email. Okay. Okay. Here's one. Is there ever a possibility for a distribution center and manufacturing center for the CBD products for them to be available in Canada due to our Canadian laws? Yes, there is a possibility. Um, it is not on the, the short-term radar. I mean, CBD, guys, is a great product. Don't get me wrong. But it's one of like 20 of our products. And in the order of popularity, as far as how many you know bottles get ordered every day it's probably like i don't know if it's even in the top 10 right now great product but having that product internationally having that product in canada i, I don't believe is going to going to have a serious impact one way or the other on volume on memberships on affiliates so again that's not on the short term plans once we get a million members in Canada, will it be worth doing? Probably, yes. And, and that's, that's a, a very sincere and genuine possibility. So um, the answer is yes, it's, it's possible. But again, not on the short-term plans until there, you know, we kind of see more demand there for it. Um, yeah, so that answers that. Let's see. See any more coming in, Ryan? No, I did just take a look, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I got. I think we got them all. Awesome. Well, yeah, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully that answered questions. I was kind of hoping there'd be more kind of personal ones. Um, that I think that was kind of more of the point of the, the calls to, to have an opportunity to get to know me today. Um, and, you know, we'll do it with, with Ryan and one with Lisa and one with Nodder as well. But uh, happy to answer ones about the company, about business and everything you ask. So all awesome questions. Thank you guys so much for joining. Have an awesome day. And uh, anything else, Ryan? I don't think so, man. It was great. Thank you so much, Ben. Cool. All right. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for joining. See ya.